This is a video to help you specialise well. I tracked down 10 Cambridge Engineering graduates and I had them share their experiences of specialising and I shaped their advice for you into a decision tree that you can use to help you make good decisions. I'm including that later in this video, but first, ask them how much employers even care about specialisms. On a scale of one to 10. Well, I'm gonna give a number, I'll say maybe two out of 10. Three out of ten. I think it's not zero. Six or seven. Maybe a, a six. A four or five. One to ten. I would say. I would say a four. Maybe a three. I wouldn't say like I needed some specific modules for my job or they were like going through the module list to see if I checked the boxes. I think even a lot of engineering employers, they'll be looking for someone with a degree in engineering. But I don't think in general, for most roles, the specific engineering you do will matter the most. My perspective, especially in the industry that I'm in, it doesn't matter overly much. You can come from thermal engineering, you can come from physics. You can, but having said that, there are specific jobs, specific industries that require you to specialized so for example if you were going to go work in uh, aerodynamic you probably need to have a degree in aerodynamics i couldn't go in with an information engineering degree without that specialization you wouldn't even get past the first hurdle if you have an idea of what you want to do at the end that's a big if because ultimately as a student do you really know what that ball entails but if you do know and you've done your research and you definitely want to do that then i think it would make sense to work backwards from that point so for that job, what requirements do I need? What do I need in fourth year? What do I need in third year, et cetera? And then work backwards from, from there. I think it does make sense. So at this point, it was becoming really clear that the first element in our decision tree has to be whether you're committed to a particular career path. And if you are, and it requires a specific specialism, choosing modules and specialisms aligned to that. But what if you're either not sure about a career path or you are, but that doesn't require a particular specialism. Well, I put that back to Tommy. Choose something that you're actually interested in. It sounds trivial, but um, if you're forcing yourself to something that you're not really that motivated in doing, then that's a really, that's an uphill battle. When it came around to specialization, what I wish I'd done at the time is thought a bit more about what I actually enjoyed studying, the types of subjects that I would actually be willing to put the effort into. Be really sure that you love the challenge, you love the struggle of the topic you're picking, because guess what? You're gonna spend two years doing that late at night, you know, it's not gonna, you're not gonna get the answers. You're not fundamentally interested in, in that struggle and in that work. It's just gonna be so much more painful and your work isn't gonna be as good. Ultimately, it's, it's just so much easier to learn what you are interested in. It almost doesn't feel like learning. Now that I work and the work that I do every day, I really enjoy. I can't say how much, how important that really is because it, it, I did an internship once that I, I didn't enjoy overly much, but now I'm doing what I enjoy and time flies. And you can only get to that if you choose what you love when you have the chance to choose it. Choose the subjects that you know that you like. You don't want to suffer in your third year doing something that you don't like. When I was having the conversations with my friends about what we were going to pick, it was kind of about picking, you know, what am I actually going to be interested in doing for these last few weeks before I'm going to be stressed, locked away in the library before exams. <laughs> Think about what you enjoy doing in terms of like what types of problems do you really enjoy can you think of like a bit of work or anything in your course you've done so far that you thought you know that was really great with so much hindsight now i think my main piece of advice is to go after things that you are interested in and that you want to learn more about and to maybe focus more on trying to do as well in those things as you can but to remember, even though it's extremely difficult, that university is really a time to learn and explore and not just to try and do the things you think you'll get the best grades in. Because for me, one of my um, definitely one of my regrets even now is I didn't do I think after second year, I didn't do any software engineering modules. I'm sure, there were some. Um, and I always enjoyed it. I always found the like software engineering parts of our degree really interesting. But I started university feeling behind in software engineering. Loads of people had already been coding. 
I didn't know anything about coding until I stepped into those doors. And so I kind of always felt like it would be illogical to choose it because I'd always be, you know, a few steps behind because I didn't already know how to do X, Y, Z. Um, and I ended up in fourth year actually kind of on YouTube, <laughs> like going through the Stanford and during like computer science 101 course and picking up things on my own and learning to build something that I had already wanted to build that kind of came out of an idea of something I wanted to do. Um, and so I, I had the ability to do it. If you're at Cambridge, you probably have the ability to pick up on any of the courses that they offer. You might not be the best person doing it, but that shouldn't matter. It's really a time to like pick things that you think that would be really cool to be able to do that. Um, and I just think I, I didn't do that a lot of the time because I was so scared about not being able to keep up or doing badly in those. I love this sense of choosing bravely from Seri, as well as Tempe's expression of how to get to work you really love. You can only get to that if you choose what you love when you have the chance to choose it. The fact that all alumni I spoke to mentioned the importance of choosing on the basis of what you enjoy means that this has got to feature really prominently on our decision tree. As Tommy said, it's really not trivial. And this now gives way to more practical considerations. Picked up on next by Tom. One thing that I'd recommend that I didn't do, but I think it's something that's probably worthwhile is to whilst you're looking at like the third year modules, also just take a little look at the fourth year modules. Because when you specialize in third and fourth year, especially in fourth year, there are specific modules that require other specific modules for you to take them. So you can therefore pick modules in third year they're going to get you the fourth year modules you want. So you can try and pick modules that lead you into a project that you'd be more interested in. And of course, you know, projects and courses aren't always the same year on year. But if you know what kind of projects are available one year, there's going to be probably similar kinds in future years. Speaking to students in the year above or two years above you, asking them for course notes, perhaps having a little flick through to see whether it's something that you're interested in. Go look at the past course notes. Go look at the past supervision examples papers exam papers as well get an idea of how this course is going to be marked because it might be that the format of questions or anything like that is just not something you particularly enjoy doing i didn't know and i didn't probably look far enough and didn't do the homework enough to realize really what the cho those choices meant but yeah go and talk to people talk to alumni uh, who are likely to also answer your questions and considering it as kind of a homework and maybe an investment for not going down the wrong path by actually finding out what it means to do that is, is really valuable. These are all brilliant tips for getting towards a short list of modules that might work for you by testing assumptions and by reducing the number of unknowns. Next up, Claire talks about the merits of stretching that decision-making window into week one of your third year. The first week you can go to as many lectures as you want obviously you're only one person so you have to make some choices if you can't make a lecture ask your friends who do go what they think so you don't have to lock anything in straight away you can feel around for what works for you so there you have it a completed decision tree which if summarized might go something like if you're committed to a career path that requires certain specialisms make choices based on that otherwise choose what you enjoy checking to see if it actually fits you definitely don't need to have all the answers right now, and perhaps even more importantly than that, your specialism really doesn't define you, nor even the opportunities that will be available to you. This is the first of four more nuanced points shared by our alumni when we were speaking about how to specialise well. That you specialise, but in reality, the doors are still open, and so you should be aware of that. Just because you've gone down one specialisation, doesn't mean that you can't then also go into something else afterwards. I specialised in one thing, but actually I probably only took one module in in third and fourth years relating to actual vehicle dynamic. Yeah, even if you're dead set on an industry, you can get into most industries with most sorts of engineering. Like civil engineering companies, they have to employ mechanical engineers to think about the vibrations. The engineering sector isn't split up into civil engineers and electrical engineers. You're going to land a spacecraft on Mars. This spacecraft is a structure that has state-of-the-art thermal protection to go through the atmosphere. It needs to go through, you know, from hypersonic to supersonic to zero speed. Um, it needs to have complex electronics for that to happen. The electronics needs to survive, you know, the radiation of traveling through space. 
It needs to use controls in order to, to guide itself to the right place. It has thrusters, which are complex chemical and, and, and fluid, fluidic machines. The actual industry or specialization you then choose isn't so important, shall I say? I could have ended up doing electrical or mechanical and still ended up being in the, the position I chose. You can easily get into the industry you want, even with the speciality that you don't necessarily associate with that industry. There's kind of a misconception that you go to university and that's the learning you're, you're going to be doing. And then once you exit university, you're done learning. Whatever you didn't learn is, is over. That's it. You miss your chance. That is not true, right? You can learn anything. I think that's a really important thing to say as well. Just because you don't take a course or specialization doesn't mean you can't learn about it. I mean, there are so many things nowadays available um, in the, in the open on, on the internet, you could very well teach yourself new skills. But then also, I would say right now, maybe 90% of what I know and need for my job came from the job. They're not expecting you to be a class, like <laughs> first class engineer, electrical engineer after four years at university. Just try to mix those subjects and graduate with as many specialties you can. <laughs> because if you are unsure, chances are you are not so sure what you want to become. So leave that door open. I think sometimes we, we underestimate like how open, um, how many doors like engineering does open for people. Like there's a lot of possibilities that people maybe haven't heard of. So for, for some people, it might be better to like leave things quite open now and not try to put themselves in a specific box. For me, like I studied statistics because I was interested in that. Uh, product management, sustainability, design, because I was interested in that. And then that led me to find the job I wanted rather than sort of choosing the job beforehand and, and trying to mix uh, everything to fit that specifically. Oh, I absolutely love this from Noah. It's the idea that if you pursue what you're interested in and you learn from what you're learning, faith that subsequent paths will reveal themselves to you. It's a kind of abundance mindset that keeps you oriented in the direction that fulfills you. And what better way to navigate a fast evolving world where you may well do jobs that don't even exist right now. Which leads me neatly onto the fourth point. Making decisions with a healthy mindset. I first asked Amirul what that decision making process felt like for him. When I was in that period too, most of my friends were also confused and everyone was scared. I think it was like a it was a bubble of people fear of what they're going to specialize in. So if I am choosing this, would I what employers would be wanting to employ me? It's very easy to get like stressed and worked up and let this decision almost kind of just halt your life easily. Um because I saw friends who, you know, very much their lives kind of seem to go into a bit of disarray while they were trying to sort out their specialisms. And at the time, I think I worried a lot. I looked at the decisions I was making. I was like, oh, I guess for me, just to go back and tell myself, you know, don't really stress it too much. Like, you know, what, what you do is going to still leave a huge number of opportunities open. And so, yeah, I think, you know, my opinion now is very much, it doesn't really matter. Like, it's, of course, it's important to like not, you know, not just, you know, just, you know, don't just cover your eyes and just pick randomly, of course, but, I think it's you know good to just kind of take the stress away and just you know put in a bit of time try and make sure it's a set that you're comfortable with and not just you know a set that you think oh this is like my aspirational eight that I want to take as it were like make sure it's the eight that you think oh I like these eight they're all good modules for me the big thing is that you know it, it's a big decision but it's very hard to really make the wrong decision I think I did a quite a good job choosing my modules, um, but I, I sort of doubted it quite a lot of the time. I guess my advice would just be to like be confident in that decision. Like there will be um, jobs available uh, for you and your skills. Don't view it as a scary decision. View it as sort of an empowering moment to start, you know, making your own choices. And it doesn't always have to be the right choice as well. You might pick a specialization that you turn out to just really not enjoy. Um, and that's fine, too, because you've at least helped narrow down the things that you are interested in. 
and rule out things that you know you're definitely not so yeah try not to take it too seriously i guess so when i started out with these conversations i wasn't sure what i was going to find but even if anyone would talk to me but from these six hours of conversations that resulted i've learned two main things Number one, specialization is a process. It's just another part of your evolution connected to your existing track record of making educational choices that are right for you. And number two, you're not alone in this. Now it's clear to see how much alumni care, but they're not alone. There's also tutors, society contacts, friends, course and college mates, and there's me. I'm Raj and I'm your engineering careers consultant, which means you can have discussions with me about this decision-making process. We can talk through the pros, the cons, and all of the factors that may be influencing your decision to make sure you make the right choices for you in a safe, supportive, friendly, non-judgmental way. My email's where you can see it and we can set that conversation up together. Until then, take good care.